Greetings everybody, this is Barry from H&W Machine Repair and we're going to do another video for you today. Today's video, we're going to be disassembling Series 1 bridge port, the table, the saddle, and the knee. Now this particular bridge port is a 1981. Um, it's definitely worn, it's gonna be getting a complete rebuild here. So this one has an old Accurite Millmate digital readout system, which is still completely operational. So we're going to do our best to get the scales off very carefully and um, see if we can salvage this thing. But this readout is over 30 years old as it sits right now. So let us get started. Um, I'm going to kind of show you the tools for the most part that we're going to be needing right here. We've got Allen wrenches, dead blow, regular hammer, a couple pry bars, several King Tony screwdrivers. We got our wrenches, um, got 3 8 wrenches for the lube system. Um, some cutters in case we got to cut some cables and I tend to use a uh, impact a little bit for disassembly only I never use it to reassemble okay let's get started first thing we are going to be doing is removing the x-axis scale now this scale had been replaced once upon a time and you can see this has got the red clip in it so this is not an original scale there will be another red clip on it when we by the time we get done Okay, now, in this case, one of the red clips got left in there, the other one is not. Um, obviously, you probably won't have any if you have this type of, this is an Accurite ENC 150 scale, by the way, which was actually the generation newer than the original. So you go up and see how they kind of work in there. A lot of times you just get them started, and then I'll take it loose, and then I'll get it in the rest of the way. But this will keep the reader head solid to the scale. Screws are loose. You can see how that's loose now. I'm just going to slide it down. Just, if you have to slide it like this, just be very careful. What happens is a lot of times you'll hit an obstruction of some sort. So we're going to come down here to where there aren't any obstructions. Go back in. And what there is, is there's a lip up under here that I'm trying to capture is what we're doing here. So. There we go. Now we have the scale in here. This bracket is broken, so we're going to replace it. Over the years of this never being removed, it just broke the scale, broke the bracket. And that's why you take it out if you noticed all the junk that fell out of there. You really shouldn't leave these in. So. All right. In there. There we go. Now we're in proper alignment. So this thing will be held in place. Okay. Now we're going to cut the table loose from the, it's just got some little zip ties holding the cable together and we want to get that free. On the back of the box, this, again, we're talking an Accurite here, so you may not have an Accurite, may not have readout on it, so you may want to fast forward, but the Accurite scales have two small screws to hold them in the boxes. Okay, scales are out. Just slide that out of the way. Now we are going to remove the scale. Normally these are quarter 20 bolts that these are held in with. You can see how the brackets are holding this together here. We also can see this is an old scale. And the way they mounted it, they left space, a lot of chips down in there. So this, while it may be reading now, is not looking good for the future. All right, we are now have this scale off. We are now ready to remove the table. What I do is I will crank the table down 
to where the table is hanging over the right side as far as it will go. You don't have to go all the way, but you want to be down pretty far because you're going to be removing the screw and nut from this from the left hand side. Okay, we have this out. Now I'm going to remove our end cap. Again, I will use an impact for disassembly. I will never use one for reassembly. So on the right side, take off the nut, the handle. I like to go ahead and disassemble this as I'm going, but this will actually slide off in one piece. You have your dial lock, your dial, and your dial holder all in one piece. End cap. Five sixteenths Allen. The end cap on the right side, see, does not have any dials, just one bearing. All right, now we'll go do the left side. Same thing. Sometimes, see, this one's very stiff to get off. That's what you're going to have your dead blow hammer for. This is pretty normal to have one of them that's pretty tight. Now this is on the left side, well you notice there's two bearings in here and a dial nut holder. This is where your load is. So this goes together first, left side first, then you do the right when you're putting it back together again. Now we are going to take the screws out of the nut. So, I have a flashlight down in here. There should be two screw holes. Do so you notice there's a screw hole with no screw in it? That was, um, got removed at some point. No one ever bothered to put it in. That, there's a small one. That would come out first. Now you have the big head there. So we remove it first. I use a pretty long screwdriver. And sometimes this turns right out, sometimes it does not. This one's coming right out without a problem. If the bolt just falls, it's no big deal. Okay, now we can remove the screw. We can remove the screw nut in one piece. Should slide out. Sometimes you have to tap it from the other side. But there you go. You see there's your nut. This was a two-piece nut. If you look at how thick your thread's here, right on the end. Now let's go down to the middle. This isn't a horribly worn screw, but you can definitely see it is here in the middle. There's definitely some wear in this screw. So we will put this aside. Okay, now we're going to loosen our gib. We're not completely take it out quite yet. The gib screw, again, is right here. I want to back it out a pretty good amount, pretty much to where I'm flush with the edge. And all I'm doing is making it so we can move this table by hand without a lot of problem. Okay, okay get it loose. We're now going to by hand slide the table 
this way. Now, if you were unloading to this end, it would be okay. But as you can see, I don't have room to unload to this end. We always unload that way. Slide it over here. And then I'm going to bring my pallet up and we're going to slide it off. Slide the table off under the pallet. Okay, when you get your pallet or die cart or whatever you're going to use, you can just take your table and slide it off. Now, you guys still have your give in, so when you get back to the middle, we're going to take our give out the rest of the way. Gives out. You can clearly see plenty of wear on that thing. So this machine is definitely due for a rebuild. Okay, table's off. Now let's look at our ways on our saddle. As you can see, plenty of wear. Originally this thing had flaking the whole way. The front is gone completely. The back is gone on the outside edges. So this thing not only has worn on each edge, it also was wearing towards the front. There's the screw that we took out of the, the um, feed nut bracket. This is what they were using as a locking screw. This is not correct. So this will just get thrown away. Okay, now we are ready to do the Y. First thing we do is take the lock out, which again, this isn't the correct handle. This is just something they put in there. Take the lock out. Never as easy as you want it to be. So, well, this lock obviously is going to end up being replaced because it's got a little bend in it since it should have just unthreaded. And basically this got bent because someone decided that it really needed to be extra, extra tight. Which it probably did not need to be that tight. Now, when you get that out, make sure you get your pin out. There's a pin everywhere. There's a lock handle. There is a pin. Okay, now, we are going to do is, as we remove the scale on the X, there's also a scale here on the Y. Now, this one's always a little more fun. Because you, it's got a backup spark, and it's got three holes. And every time, this is an old scale, guess what? The three holes are plugged up. So, need some sort of a little pick or something. Get your holes cleaned out because you're wanting to free this scale up. All right, these things are sometimes very, very, very gummed up. But fortunately, they don't have to come super loose, just a couple turns. All we are wanting to do is get the scale to where it will slide on its own. Like I said, you gotta get these three loose. Once they're loose, you could be able to just kind of wiggle your scale in there a little bit. So what we can do. Now, as I mentioned, this system's 35 years old. Well, this scale is also 35 years old. So this is different than the other one. This doesn't have the red clips. You notice here, this plate that has screws in it. This means this is an old mini scale style. So what you're gonna need to do is in perfect world, you would line this up. If you had the actual alignment brackets, you take this off and use them, but they don't exist anymore. So basically what we're going to do is be very careful while we disassemble this. So we're going to just take the cap off of the reader head. And I'm going to explain to you why the odds of this working when we're done are very slim. Even if you take all the precautions. Okay, you take your cover off. If you're lucky, you still have a piece of cardboard in here. But if you look inside of here, put my flashlight out, you're gonna see some really small, fine wires. Well, in order to get to the bolts holding this on, you gotta take all this loose. See those wires right there? Gotta remember, this is 35 years old or 30 years old. So the odds that we're gonna get this all done intact are not real great, but we're going to try. There 
two round head cap screws that are holding this on. Okay, once you have these out, what I always would do, what I do, tuck it back in, take my cover, and I'll put in a couple of the screws back in. All that's doing is holding everything as assembled as I possibly can. Once I have those out, I will take my scale and my everything in one piece, try to hold this as much as I can in position, take it out, hold it up like, just kind of hold it with one hand like this. Then once you get that, you gotta take some electrical tape, It doesn't have to be electrical, we just use electrical here. And you're just gonna wrap it around as much as you can to hold this thing. You wanna hold this reader head as steady as you can. Around it a couple times. Okay, now the Y, and you can see it's being held in pretty good shape. So there's a shot, we could get it back together and be working. If it doesn't work, and you can look at this, see how the lift seal over 30 years is completely gone on one side. This would all need to be replaced, cleaned up. There's a lot to do in here. A little chance to get, get it work correctly. All right, let's put that aside. Okay, now we're back to mechanical again. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna crank your table out your saddle out to the far outside. If your machine has zerks, then you don't have any of these the lube lines in here. Um, but we will address those in a minute. We are now going to take the same thing we did on the end caps here. We're going to take the end cap off here. So three quarter inch. Now you're going to notice something you're not, probably not going to see. This machine had accordion way covers on it, and this particular set took the top two bolts out and went with hex heads in it. Nine sixteenths. Take these top two out. These were the old original Gore-Tite way covers which are nice covers. They're also insanely expensive. And we actually sell a accordion set for right around $300 that you do not need any of these extra holes for. So, but this had bolts, had extra spacers, all kinds of fun stuff in it. Cap. Now sometimes if these end caps are pinned in, you're gonna have a little more work getting them out. None of these even had pin holes. But sometimes these things were originally pinned in, so you're gonna to have to really um, work to get them off. But as you can see, the Y-axis is just like the left side. It's got two bearings and a bearing bracket. Again, that's to capture it so you don't get in play back and forth. Okay, just as in the other ones. Shine our light in here, let's see what they left us. Now that is original. See the small screw head and the large screw head. You take the small one out first and then we will take out the larger one. There goes out. Screw it nut. Well, sometimes it comes out easy, sometimes not so easy. Kind of glad it's not coming out because I'm going to show you a little trick here. Now that you have all this off, you can take your chip guards and slide them forward. And look, right there is your screw. So you can grab it on both sides if you need to. Um, if you want to, now in our case, we're replacing them. If I can just take a pry bar and get into one of the teeth and try to pop it out, see, like that. Okay. 
And you can see how that dry caked in. What was happening was the um, lube was getting very, very, like almost a grease, turning into a grease in there. So, yeah, it's uh, not very nice. But, and again, you can see how thick that is there. This was really worn, how thin that is in the middle. Okay, we now have the, the screw out. We are going to take the covers off, the, the way wiper covers. And again, these have got this extra plate on here. If you don't have the accordions, you'll just have the plate. Then again, here's the part of the problem when you have these accordion covers like this, all the extra chips you develop. But there's your way wiper plate, and you see the two way wipers in here for a long, long time. It's actually recommended you replace these once a year. I've never met anyone yet who does that. In the back of this one, because it had a scale on it, they actually put two of the stops. And what these were to do is make sure your scale didn't hit the um, back of your machine while you were running back. So we'll remove those real quick. We'll do the same thing with the back of the wiper cover. Okay, same thing. We'll take the cover off. Now, on this one, obviously, well, you can't take it all the way off. You just slide it backwards for now. Wipers off. Okay, we are going to, if you recall our scale, we got to remove our bracket here. All right, we are now ready to remove the yoke, or the technical term, the feed nut bracket. This is part right here. First thing we're gonna do is there's a lube line right here. We'll pop it off real quick. That came off real easy. This is the lube line that goes down to the Y axis. So pop the screw out with the bracket. Whenever you do this, if you have these, just kind of keep track of where you keep all the little parts or else you will be calling us to order extra parts when you put it back together again. These also sometimes are pinned. This one is not. I will tell you if it is pinned, knock the pins out. Same thing with the end caps. You are not going to reuse them again when you go back together again. Okay. The yoke is now loose. You just lift, turn it. 90 degrees go up and you notice I got my line still hooked up just give it a little tug comes right out now make sure when you do this you still see the keyway in here and in there because if those are out then you're gonna have to replace that okay at this point what I do is I release all the rest of the lube lines And the reason I do that is because when you take this off, you can then just flip it over and, and take all this off. Because if you're sending these into us, I don't want any of this lube system on here. Because that's just charging extra work for me and extra money for you. Now what I strongly suggest is while you have this apart, is you go through your lube lines and probably put in new meters, especially if you are getting your ways redone. And we do stock every one of those parts. Okay. Okay, make sure everything is free. It is. You will need a 3 8 inch wrench because we have one thing to do over here. You'll notice the lube line coming from the saddle down to the tank. We need to get that off of there. Now, we will be removing the gizzard. This 
So on the left side. Gibbs crib, Gib. Doesn't look too bad. Some even wear, so that's good. Okay. Now at this point, this handle, this can come up, can come off. I think you get a couple rags of some sort. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it off. And I'm going to tip it up and set it on that back edge on top of the knee. Set it up there. Up. Tip it up. Okay. Now, we're going to move our lock. And remove the pin. See the pin, the locking pin on the saddle is much longer, much larger. Usually two screws, and there they are holding the the um, meter block. Yes, the meter block in. Thank you very much. Holding in the metering block, and then there's one that's holding our bracket down. Sometimes I have to take the bracket off to get to this one. Sometimes it comes off. And this one. <clears throat> Again, like I said, I strongly suggest at this point, you tear all this apart, put in new oil meters, blow your lines out, make sure when you get your ways back that everything's good to go. We will make sure all the lines are cleared when we are done with what we're doing. The metering block off. Oops, and you'll notice sometimes, depending on the style of your block, there may be a couple of spacers, which these two fell out. Got to keep an eye for them. Underneath the block, between the bolt that goes down in here. So. And all you're doing is keeping this up just a tiny bit. Okay, with one hand hold onto your saddle, the other hand pull your lines out. There you go. You'll notice three lines to the back, five lines to the front. The meters are all numbered, so you can just be careful, take them out and replace them with the same number. Or if you would like, you can just go with all with number ones. It will work just fine. Okay, we now have the table and the saddle off. We will now be working on taking the knee off. This weighs 50 pounds or so. Okay, you have your two chip guards. They'll just literally lift right off. And kind of keep track of the direction they are. You can't put them in the wrong direction, then you'll lose travel. Basically, the way I do it is when I'm in the front, they're pretty flush. But, and your bevels obviously go down. So, just keep an eye on it. First thing to do, right in here is a three quarter inch nut now if you don't have an impact you may need your knee crank to hold on to this impact is one of the best things for this put on the nut kind of hold here there you go comes right off there's a nut and then there's a washer Next we are going to do is we're going to remove the elevating shaft and the reason we do that is because we're going to use that hole to lift this knee off of here. We are now have the chip guards off. You can now slide your back cover off. And we are going to, before you take this off, you want to make sure that the lock nut is loose. This one is not, so we will take our knee crank. Hold it. There 
There we go. You want that to be loose because you want to be able to get that off. So, once that's loose, we're going to take that, the crank housing off. Basically, that slides on. It's just on a key. There is nothing else holding it in. So, you should be able to take a pry bar or a couple pry bars sometimes. Sometimes these come out very easy. Sometimes they're very stiff. Okay, once that's off, unthread your lock nut. Take your dial off. Now you notice that all the other dials are 200 thousandths increments. This dial is only 100 thousandths. So when you're putting it back together, make sure this dial goes down here. Now, this is, this is got a dial holder. So we are going to remove it. This is the newer style, which is one piece here. There's also a style that has, has a dial holder like what's on the other, um, on the X and Y axis. Okay, so we've taken the three screws out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this out in one piece. So sometimes you can reach in there and just pull it out like that. It's gonna come out in one piece. You've got the bearing here. Make sure your bearing's still good. These are bearing in here. Make sure, and honestly, these are good most of the time. So you can see a pretty good amount of wear on that and a lot of chips in there. So that'll probably be getting replaced in our rebuild. So we now have a gear sitting in here. Usually you can just reach in and pull it up. Now you notice it's keyed. There's also a key in here. Sometimes the key is really stiff. So if it doesn't come out by hand, keep track of it. You want to make sure when you tear this thing apart, you get the key out of there so you don't lose it. Okay, we are now going to relate, remove the lube tank and get the lube lines free and this last bracket off of here. So we'll do the bracket since it's on this side real quick. These are 3 8 inch. We're going to take the lube line lo loose here. that free that we will remove main reason we remove these is just to get so we can clean lines out and make sure all holes and everything are flush when it's ready to go back there again there are different styles of these this is the pump that has the divider on the pump. Some of them come up and go into a four-way up here. So it just really depends on what you have. I'm going to release the lines. The screwdriver, you, nine times out of ten, those are just flattening screws. Same thing, if this is, you're taking this off, I would suggest you uh, remove the pump, clean all this out real well. Just make sure when you get everything back, your ways are, you're pumping good clean oil through this thing. Replace the filter. Yeah. yeah you can replace the filter in the bottom of it. Nothing worse than uh, getting rebuilt ways back and putting them together and starting to pump dirty oil through again. And make sure you're using whey oil and not motor oil. It has to be weight oil. The next step is our two weight wipers on each side. These can either be flat heads or like these. Now 
Now you'll notice when we remove the left one, that's where our give is. So we have the give screws. We have everything loose, all exterior things off. We are now going to remove the, the knee lock. Okay, remove this, the knee lock. We will be popping the cover off here, and this is just really a pop on cover. Sometimes they don't want to come off, but that's what you can see is this little pop on cover. And then inside this hole, there are two set screws, of which we need to remove them both. There's the stop, and then there's the actual screw in here. For some reason, someone decided these needed to be super tight, which they do not. This is going into a notch. All it's doing is stopping your handle from being pulled out. All right. But it's a dog point, as you can see. Okay. Once you have those out, grab the hand, the lock handle, and just start wiggling it and pulling, wiggling it and pulling. Eventually, it'll get to where it'll come out. Okay, once you get out, what you're going to notice is the way this works is this is a cam. And your lock is in here, and so what's happening is it's loose, and then when you cam it over to lock it, you're actually tightening up on the gib that's the pin, which we'll be pulling out after we pull the knee off. Now, a lot of the knees have, just like we had on the saddle on the table, they'll have locks here. This one's old enough it did not have that. It only had that knee crank lock. So our next step, what we're going to do is we're going to actually move the uh, head around so that we can get access to get this off. So we'll be loosening all four of the, the uh, turret bolts. to notice there's a screw right here sometimes it's threaded sometimes it's an allen this is a stop screw what this does is this prevents you from over traveling your knee up well obviously we're removing the knee so we are going to remove this screw well, this one's only finger tight so we have that out we are now going to remove our gib Long screwdriver comes in handy. Because it's nice because the long screwdriver is up above, so you're not banging your hand every time you try to go around on the ways. All right, slide it out. Quick inspection of it. Definitely some wear on that gib. Look at that, type and bottom. We're, believe it or not, ready to remove this. So you will obviously clear all your tools. Going to grab a strap and get the fork truck in position. So I'll be right back. Folks, we're now going to remove the knee. Now the way we do it, we use a fork truck. Um, it's easier if you have two people. So Virginia, the videographer, will be helping me on this. But remember the shaft, the elevating shaft that I said we take out so we put a strap through? That's why. We have a strap we put through here. We have a hook on our fork truck and we're gonna, I'm gonna come and hook it. We're gonna pick this thing up completely. Your, and it's through there and sometimes they're very hard to get out 
This one's really hard. There it is. This is the lock, your knee lock. Now again, if you had one of the newer ones, you'd also have either one more or two more right in here. Now, every last thing is out of this. This is how we would want it if you were shipping it to us. Completely strip down, throw it on a pallet with the other components, tie it down, send all the, get all the gives, package them up and send it to us. So this is basically how you remove the table, saddle, and knee from a Bridgeport Series 1. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe to our channel.